building an AC generator pretty simple. We're going to be moving on to modeling a transformer. So, the structure of a transformer, soft iron core, all right? And it's going to have a, well, let's use 300 trans turns as my primary coil, 600 turns as my secondary coil. Double the number of turns, so, because uh, I know Robert's name, how much are we expecting to read? Double the amount. Double the amount. I guess we read about 18.6, we're expecting 37.2. Okay? And we're reading, yeah, approximately double that, 34. Okay, 18 double it, expect 36, we're 34. We're getting two volts. Okay? Now we said if we got 600 turns to 300 turns, we'd be expecting around 9 volts. Not as much. Explanation is we don't have, we don't have the iron core to help concentrate the magnetic field down. So, I'll uh, set that up properly. Hold that on. I'll take that and I'll step down transform. We've got around 8 volts, 8.8, .8. so almost a 9 volt we're expecting.
car is going to induce an EMF and induce current inside this rotor, inside the metal rotor. Okay? And that's by Lenz's law, right? We normally have an EMF induced to oppose the change in flux. So the change in flux is rotating like this. To oppose that, we're going to induce a current. And this induced current is going to cause the motor to rotate by the motor effect, right? We have a current in a magnetic field, in an external magnetic field, that's going to cause the, the um, rotor to rotate. And it's going to rotate to try and, I guess, negate that changing flux. As the flux is rotating like this, the rotor is going to try and rotate so as to catch up. Because if it catches up with the rotating magnetic field, it no longer needs to experience a change in flux. And that's what's going on here. By having this electromagnet essentially here, and using AC, we're having an we're having a um, changing magnetic flux. So we're using the current in this, that's causing it to rotate, so as to, I guess, overcome, so as to catch up with this changing flux. Okay, here one more time. Okay, first thing to note about this induction motor. I am going to connect my coils coming out of my transformer, essentially an AC power source, I'm going to connect them up to this. Alright? So there will be current flowing through one of these, around here, back in through the other alligator clip. There is absolutely no electrical connection between my power source here and my motor. Okay? But, this is what happens. You can see we made from made that. <laughs> Not very effective. But the important point to notice is that without having to have an electrical connection going into my motor, I'm still able to make it spin. Okay? We have the magnetic flux threading through this iron core. Alright? It's passing through the iron core. When we do this, the iron the iron the magnetic flux has to it goes through the iron core, and then when it gets here, it needs to conduct through air part of the iron core, essentially. Okay? So air is a much poorer conductor of a magnetic field than the actual iron itself. So connected like this, it's all conducting through iron. It's all very efficient. Here we have to conduct through some of the much higher resistance, I guess you could say, to the magnetic field. And so that's why the efficiency of the motor drops down so much. It rotates much slower. We've got the part of the experiment. Here we go. You can see the rotation. Now we said the problem was we have to conduct through air, which is really slow. Let's replace the air with this. Much faster. Okay? Essentially, we restore that ferromagnetic connection. Magnetic score. Slow down. Speed up. Okay. In this case, it's very simple. Um, the, the swivel coil would just go clockwise if you have two pairs. What if you only have one pair? Just like my, uh, my, my AC motor is powered by one single phase AC. Okay? Single phase AC, the only thing that these, this single phase pair of coils can do is just make a feel like this and then reverse the, situ uh, the, the direction. In this situation, if the squirrel cage wasn't moving already, it can't make up its mind as to whether to go clockwise or anti-clockwise. It doesn't know what to do because the forces are the Lenz law force is equal in this case, right? Um, in reality, how single phase induction motors are uh, manufactured is you see these little copper bits. They're called shader coils, and their role is to warp the um, shape of the magnetic field such that there's a slight clockwise torque initially. So no matter what, every time I power this up, it'll spin the same direction and it'll start right away. Okay? Um, this, this lowers the efficiency, the total efficiency of it a bit, but it ensures that it starts without any assistance. Without this, I'll need to actually spin with my finger before, before it starts going one way. If I spin it the other way, it'll start going the other way. Okay? 